Hello everyone, Don the Crown here. I want to make a real quick video that goes through the old stuff that you can find in the new Mistville mechanic for this season. And I uh, decided to make a tier list maker for this. So if you're a content creator and you want to use this, a link to it is in the description down below. So, and also a link if you want to use this to kind of as a quick reference sheet. But I'm going to quickly go through all of the different stuff that you can get. I'm probably not going to go through the extra stuff that is part of the like special events because these are kind of random, but I'll touch on each one that you can kind of interact with. And you might notice right off the bat that for the tiers here, we're doing something that's kind of a little bit maybe different than a normal tier list because uh, instead of like going and doing like S tier, A tier, B tier, all that crap, I'm really kind of trying to break it down into like, is this something that like I would almost always take? Is this something that is helpful? in a situation like where I have other things, like is it a gimmick where like, it is kind of a puzzle piece that fits with other stuff and you should take it? Is it something that is, you know, useful to you most of the time? Is it sometimes helpful to you? Like, eh, you know, it's kind of okay to take, or is this something that you really should not take and really only take if it's like your last resort or you're like buying out the final part of the shop. And uh, I think that this is gonna be a little bit more helpful as opposed to like a raw tier list because there's definitely some things on here that are, I would consider core that are maybe not like super duper like S tier by themselves, but are like really, really good in most situations. And there's also some things that I think are pretty gimmicky or like only helpful sometimes once you have other things. And so hopefully this will give you a little bit more of a breakdown. We're going to go through all of the stuff. I tried to organize it so similar things are together, but we're going to start off right away here with the lantern and the spice. So the lantern, what it does is it gives you 40 max sanity. When you upgrade it, it'll give you 10 max sanity every single day. And I think that this is often helpful, especially early on in a run, because going from 120 max sanity to 40 gives you a lot more wriggle room, wriggle room, wriggle room. <laughs> and you're going to be getting basically 12 more sanity every single day. Just from that max sanity, you get a 30% heal plus 10 once you have your like uh, passive tree max out. And so that is kind of impactful for most runs. I tend to take this if it is like paired with anything that isn't kind of above it or you may be on the same tier. But then things like the spice here, I kind of consider as only sometimes helpful. So the spice is uh, just gives you 20 sanity heal every single day. This is a little bit less impactful, even though it's giving you more sanity per day than the lantern, because there's a lot of days, especially early on, where you're going to be able to end at nearly max sanity, even as you're clearing all of the tiles. And so getting a, even more healing doesn't help you out all that much. And this doesn't necessarily have any road for you to kind of win off of it. Whereas if you accidentally upgrade the lantern through like a random event or something, it's starting to give you max sanity, which can kind of snowball your run a little bit. Likewise, the old blanket here, I think, is also going to be sometimes helpful. This only gives you 8% sanity heal, 16 if it's upgraded, and uh, that's like 9 sanity per day. Uh, this is not really great. However, once you get to mid-game and into late game, this is like a massive sanity booster. It's very helpful and something that I'd, I'd like to get at that point. However, this is not something you should really pick up early on in your run which is kind of like what determines your total run. Next up, we're going to talk about the cartographer stuff. Now, there are a whole a couple of different ways that I think that you can kind of break the game and win, but I do think that the cartographer setup is, for me at least, the most consistent way to win. And these first four things here are pretty important to that setup, which is why I put the cartographer quill in the core. If you don't know what this does, basically... It makes it so that if you click on a previewed cell, so like if you scouted it through any of the maps or food or you know, other stuff, uh, there is a 50-50 chance that it will preview another cell. And once you upgrade this, it just goes all the way up to 100%, and it's incredibly strong when it's paired with these next few things. So I think the cartographer bag is very strong, gives you 12 gold every single time that you click on a previewed cell. And you can use this to like make certain foods free. So the ones where like if you previews three random cells or previews sanitariums, this can now make those foods free. You're able to like chart your movement through the map a little bit smoother. And most importantly, this can help you kind of get the gold machine rolling. 
because the important things for you to get when you're getting all of the old stuff is you want to get gold generation, you want to get sanity generation, you get max sanity generation. And these two things together really help out. Now these are kind of useless without any way to scout, which we'll kind of get to a little bit, but I think that these are very strong. Lastly, I'm going to also put the cartographer bottle in core because this gives you sanity back when you're clicking on a previewed cell, but it also gives you max sanity once it's upgraded. And so it's five sanity heal normal and then max five sanity when it's upgraded. And that just goes really crazy. The bag here, by the way, goes from 12 gold to 25 gold. So upgrading it, you need only 19 clicks for it to pay itself back. And then if you have anything that's healing you for gaining gold, it just kind of goes crazy and it's just really fun. Likewise, I'm going to put the stool here into the gimmick tier. And mostly that's because I don't take stool unless I already have the ability to preview cells or I have some of these other things here. Whereas I would take the three Carto items just by themselves because it can really kind of get you into end game. These are definitely the things that can make you win day 15 with ease, full clicking the entire map, no problem. And uh, I don't really think the stool is on the same level because it doesn't give you coins back and doesn't give you max sanity. And uh, yeah, I think that is you know, pretty straightforward for the Cardo stuff. Next up, I would say the shop discount and the food discount both go into often helpful. Now I know there is a strategy where you can go and reroll the shop a whole bunch and buy cheese and fish, but I've kind of like after testing this a couple of times, found that it's definitely not as consistent as uh, just trying to not do that because the fish apparently seems to be extremely, extremely rare and it costs 250 gold to reset your life. And so I don't really find the food discount to be something that helps me like recover a bad run all that much or to, I mean, it does help you recover a bad run a little bit, but it's not something that takes your run like from nothing to snowballing just by itself. You kind of need to get like a lot of luck and a lot of food and other things, and you have to have max sanity generation already. And so this is almost kind of like a win more type of thing. The shop discount is really nice. I rarely will ever buy this, but if I have the option between, to pick this from an old stuff cell, I will take this over a lot of other things because this allows you to pick and choose stuff out of the shop a lot easier. Next up for the alchemy discount, I say that this is sometimes helpful. Uh, there's very frequently you're going to want to upgrade a lot of stuff. But once again, this is not something that I would generally buy unless I'm already winning. If I'm already winning and I'm already like starting to snowball, I will buy this to make the snowball bigger but this is definitely something I won't buy in like my first couple of shops ever because it's you're spending gold to make it so that you spend less gold to upgrade stuff when you could have used that gold to upgrade stuff. And so it's not as useful as some of the other things. Uh, shop roller, I will say that this is probably more often helpful. I'm not really gonna try to do horizontal ranking here, but maybe a little bit. But shop roller, I think it can really save your run, especially I've had plenty of runs where I start getting my gold generation going, but we're missing like the Carto bottle or the stool. And uh, we just roll the shop a few times and find the stuff that we need. And this just can definitely save your run, especially once you're kind of like into the mid game quite a bit. Next up for the shopping list, I think that this is sometimes helpful. By itself, it just adds one more food and one more old stuff to the list. And uh, that's like not super duper helpful. If you're like really struggling to find old stuff though, uh, you can you know just pick this up and it gives you more chances the next time you come to a shop, but it's not something that like I will go out of my way to purchase. Now, if you're like already snowballing, you can upgrade this and make sure so you can just like click on old stuff and just buy and it will refresh that particular slot, which is pretty nice, but the shop roller you know kind of does that better. Next up, we're coming onto the things that improve uh, the nodes that you can click, the banks and the sanity stuff. And so I say bankers IOU is like often helpful. I would say this is borderline core. Like, mm, <laughs> yeah, I would say that bankers IOU is actually core here. And the reason for this is this basically doubles the amount of gold that you get back from banks. And you're always gonna find like two, maybe three banks on every single day for full clearing everything. 
and this just increases the amount of gold that you can get. And when you upgrade this as well, it just increases the amount of gold by a bunch and you get healing from gold and gold can effectively buy you sanity. It can like skip you through levels. If you get the right food in the store, it can get you old stuff. And so the more gold you have, the better it's going to be for your run. Uh, likewise here for the sanity stuff, I think max sanity here is uh, sometimes helpful. This only gives you, I think, seven more sanity for clicking on sanatoriums, but then it gives you seven max sanity when you click on uh, when it's upgraded. And this can be a decent source of getting your max sanity up. However, it's quite expensive, and this is kind of something that, like, maybe a little bit of a last resort not necessarily the best option for max sanity uh, maybe maybe one of the worst the options but you know this does help and this kind of limited though you're only going to get about three sanatoriums per map so you're only getting like 21 sanity back from these whereas i think the better sanity node here gives you 10 back per sanatorium if it upgrades you get 20 sanity back per sanatorium so that's like 30 to 60 sanity back per day if it's upgraded and that is just incredibly powerful next up we have two additional core things and that's going to be the healing bag and the regular both of these heal you for uh eight or for every eight coins you get one sanity back a healing bag when you upgrade it, it goes you get one heal for every four coins and the regular makes it so that for every eight coins you get one max sanity and these you just want basically on every build that you can possibly get Almost any run, these are going to be one of the best items you can get because you're already looking to get more coins. Now coins turn into sanity, so when you find a bank, it also heals you as well and uh, can potentially even increase your max sanity. This works really well with Carto Bag and Quill. So like eventually, if you're like full clearing the entire map, clicking all 24 clickable cells, you'll be able to get a lot of sanity and a lot of max sanity back and typically getting upgraded regular cardo bag and upgraded cardo quill with any scouting means you win. You basically will just automatically win from that combination because regular will give you max sanity, cardo bag gives you coins, and then cardo quill allows you to keep clicking all over the place. And if you have things like the bottle or the stool as well, you just can't really lose at that point uh it becomes very difficult you have to kind of like make mistakes but it becomes easy mode next up we have the goblet this kind of gives you coins back depending on how much you have in the bank and i personally think that this thing is terrible it costs you about 200 coins to buy in the shop and uh it's going to take you a long freaking time to recover that amount of money from the goblet and so unless you're like already winning, the only time I think I've ever actually purchased this in the shop is when I already have like 2000 coins, but I don't have the ability to roll a shop or reset the shop through shop list. And so just might as well get it out of the pool of stuff that I can see. And so I put this in the last resort category. Uh, next up, we have more alchemy. This one I would think you go into both often helpful or sometimes helpful. But this is kind of like, to me, a win more type of thing. It's kind of like similar to the alchemy discount here, where it's just like, this allows you to upgrade two items a day as opposed to just one. And if you upgrade the bottle, it'll make it so that you can upgrade infinite amount of things. But the only time you're ever really going to use that is when you're pretty much already winning. When you have like over a thousand gold in a single day and you just want to upgrade a whole ton of stuff, that can be very, very helpful. Now, if I am starting to go super crazy with gold, I will look for bottle in order to kind of like secure my win. But early on, it's not a really good thing to pick up. Like seeing this on day one or day you know five even is not super great. Next up, we have pliers. I'll put this under often helpful because I think that pliers are often helpful. Now, these things can be a little bit of a bait. They cost 100 gold to buy but then you can upgrade them for 400 gold, which is a lot. And when you get them, it makes it so old stuff nodes go from giving you two options to three, but then when you upgrade them, you get a second set of three after you pick the first three. And so you're getting a total of two old stuff each time you get an old stuff node, which can be pretty good. However, uh, I tend not to upgrade these anymore. 
unless I can already see on the map that there are two old stuff on that particular day. Because I've been burned way too many times upgrading these on day two or day three, and I don't get any old stuff for like three, four days. And that's 400 gold that I could have potentially spent at the shop, could have upgraded other stuff to kind of help me win. And so the pliers really are only useful when you know for sure that you're gonna be getting old stuff like right now, today. <laughs> And uh, so I really wouldn't recommend upgrading them. However, picking them is a great thing because it gives you more options. And I highly would recommend picking them if you don't have a better option next to them. And they're also pretty cheap to buy at the shop, especially if the discount, they're only 80 coins at that point. So not bad. Likewise, the fork and knife is pretty good, especially if you upgrade this, the fork and knife, I think uh, kind of goes into the gimmick tier here. If you're trying to do like a food particular type of build, uh, the fork and knife, I think, would even be core. But what this does is gives you more options at food nodes, and then it makes it so that when you buy or receive food from any source, you're going to get one more additional use out of that food. And so if you buy, like, cheese or, you know, fish or something, you're going to get one more use out of it, which is massive. And so upgrading these can, like, not necessarily I save your game or anything most of the time, but it can definitely like help you go into like the infinite territory if you do have like the food discount, the shop roller. And this, you can definitely like fish for fish a little bit more here and potentially win. Likewise, the food case here, I'm going to say that this is only sometimes helpful. And so food case gives you two additional food slots. And if you upgrade it, you can make it so you can choose two particular food uh you know, two, two different foods at a food node. And uh, I've just had so many times where I have like one or two foods and I have plenty of space still in my inventory. And this doesn't really help me. Now, if you're sitting on like three out of three food nodes and you have like a fork and knife or a food discount, this might be something you want to consider. But for me, most of the times, I feel like this is not super duper good. Likewise, food max and food heal both of these are nice to have. They provide it's kind of like on your terms healing or on your terms max, uh, you know, sanity as well. But these, I don't really feel like these make or break your run. Like I would rather have better, like 10 more sanity from this than getting a little bit more sanity from every time I activate a food. Now, if you are like doing a full food build, these are definitely very, very nice but I don't think that they're like mandatory in any stretch of the imagination. Next up, we're getting into all of the maps. And so if you have one of these, they are going to uh, reveal a node on the, you know, the tiles. If you have them at the start of the map, for the most part. And uh, when you upgrade them, it'll either show you more or in the case of like stuff like the shop, old stuff, food or alchemy, it will reveal that tile, meaning like, it is already cleared and you can explore from that zone. So starting off, I think that the bank map is right up here in the gimmick. This is something that is very, very helpful if you have any of the Carto stuff up here in core, kind of already going, something I definitely will pick, but I tend not to pick this unless I already have some of the stuff up here or even the Carto stool. And so if I don't have any of this stuff yet, I won't pick the bank map. Same thing with the sanitarium map. Although I think the sanitarium map is probably a little bit better because it will let you know where at least one sanitarium is, one safe spot on the map, and that is pretty good. Next up, I would say that the shop map, the old stuff map, the alchemy map, and the food map all fall into often helpful. So not every single day is going to have a shop map. Not every single day is going to have... Not every day is going to have a shop. Not every day is going to have old stuff. Not every day is going to have... Uh, alchemy stuff and not every day is gonna have food and so sometimes you can pick these up and you won't see any change on the next day which isn't very helpful now note that if you pick up the shop map and there is a shop on the day that you're currently on it will it will preview it for you right away and so this can be a good way to kind of like get the cartographer quill rolling on that day but if there's no shop it doesn't do anything for you which is kind of bad Next up, the burnt map, I think goes up here with the sanitarium map and the bank map as gimmick, because this will always reveal two cells for you. 
every single day. When you upgrade it, it shows you four. And this is incredibly helpful because it always works every single day, no matter what. And this can even like reveal the exit. It can reveal bad omens and kind of like help you make smarter decisions about clearing the map. There's only so many places that the exit can be. And so, uh, you know, taking away you know, two to four tiles on the total map can kind of help you eliminate some spots. Next up, we have the different maps for the different bad omens. I think that blind map is not super duper helpful. This might be something that like I take, if I have no other scouting at all, I will take this. Uh, if this is my only scouting option for my Cardo, I will take this. Otherwise, I almost never take this because it is not super duper helpful. Uh, conversely, anxiety map, I think is very useful. You also always have an anxiety tile on every single day. And uh, generally, unless you have a lot of other things set up, you don't want to click on them because they cost twice as much to remove. And that can just be a huge pain if it's like in the way for you. And so this can give you the opportunity to avoid the node. And it could also give you the chance to like, you know, go around it and clear all the spots around it and then clear it if you're doing cartographer stuff. So you can just leave it free standing without having to clear it. Uh, and then for poverty map and for anorexia map, I put both of these into the sometimes helpful, probably like closer to this side over here, especially if you have other searching stuff, because uh, these tend not to be very helpful. In a lot of ways, like I don't really care about the anorexia tiles all that much, except for sometimes they can somewhat end your run. If you like, you know, you click on a tile and you're expecting to use food to clear it and you can't because it's anorexia, that can end your run. And then poverty can kind of end up gimmicky as well. If you're using some stuff we'll talk about in a little bit, but I don't necessarily feel like this is something that I would pick over like a bank map or a burnt map. Next up, uh, beak mass. This makes it so that everything on the map uh, is cost one less to explore. And this is actually pretty useful because this is like a guaranteed like 24 sanity saved if you clear the entire map. Uh, early on, this is pretty nice to see. It pretty much almost means that like you'll be able to full clear the first five days without having to get too much of a headache. But past that point, like it's not super duper going to help you. Uh, it's definitely not something that's going to like win the game for you or really make or break all that much. And so I don't think that it is super duper useful. And I certainly wouldn't pick this over like any of the stuff in the core. Probably wouldn't pick it over most of the stuff above it in almost any situation. Likewise with the boot here, I don't really like the boot all that much. What this does, it makes it so that if you see one of the ruins nodes, which is like the green little symbol on the map, normally you won't be able to traverse through that at all. And uh, the boot just makes it so that that is just a blank tile that you can travel through. Now, if you upgrade this, it does make it so that all of the nodes around the ruins are now kind of like revealed in a, a kind of a way because there'll be zero to explore on that spot and it becomes quite strong. However, upgrading the boots is like the most expensive thing in the game, I believe at 500 coins. So generally you're not going to do that unless you're like in a real tough situation. And in that case, you're more choosing to upgrade the boot as opposed to taking the boot. Uh, and then we have the three bears or the three stuffed animals. And I personally think that all of these are core and I will almost always snatch these up unless I'm looking to like get something for my gimmick rolling. And so these make it so that the bad omens cost less to remove. Mr. Misfortune makes it so you get both of these make it so you get sanity back when you remove a bad omen. And then Mr. Misfortune will give you max sanity when he's upgraded and baby bear will give you back 20 as opposed to 10 sanity. And all of these are really, really good, especially Mr. Misfortune and baby bear. Miss Grumpy can kind of fall off in end game if you're forcing anxiety and blocking it. But for the most part, if you get any of these in the early game, is really going to give you a huge leg up because a lot of the times it'll make it so that finding a bad omen is no longer bad and is quite useful instead. 
Likewise, we have the filth items. So these are all things that proc when you remove bad omens. And the first one here gives you a 50% chance to get gold when you remove a bad omen. And I think that this just goes into core as well because these kind of work together. Like if you're already kind of able to remove bad stuff, uh, we want to be able to do that. And this just gives you a chance to basically turn every bad omen into a bank. So before it's upgraded, it's 50%. When it's upgraded, it's 100%. So that basically means every bad omen is now a bank as well. And if you have healing bag or regular, you're just like starting to really roll, especially with upgraded regular and filth wages. Very nice. Uh, next up, though, the other filth stuff I don't think is as helpful. So filth food I put here in the often helpful. Uh, simply because this is only a 30% chance in the beginning. So maybe like closer to the middle here. And lots of times this just won't proc. And you also have to kind of min max and really pay attention to your food slots. I've had plenty of times where I just click through everything, remove everything. I'm like, oh Lord, I, I had filth food and I didn't leave a spot for it to proc. Uh, <laughs> not very good. Next up, filth token. I'm gonna put in like almost the bottom of sun times helpful. This is a 10% chance to proc. It kind of feels like it's a 1% chance to proc. It doesn't really happen. It feels like at any time. And worst of all, this can put certain things into your inventory that are bad. Like we'll talk about the uh, more bad omen things here in a little bit, but it can put any of these into your inventory and block you from getting any of the ones that didn't get. And so that can be, uh, that can be kind of run ending which is you know, not something that I really like. And also it just doesn't seem to proc all that much. So I almost never would buy this unless I had tons of coins and I would almost never pick this over almost anything else. The filth map, I'm gonna put this up into the gimmick category. And the reason we put this in the gimmick category is because this can be a good way to get your cardo stuff kind of kicking off, especially if you don't have cartographer quill leveled up yet. So you only have 50% chance. This gives you a 50% chance when you're removing a bad omen to give you a preview, which can just kind of get the whole preview train rolling again. Nothing feels worse than when you have uh, regular leveled up, Carto leveled up, Carto bottle, and then you don't have Carto quill or your unleveled up Carto quill doesn't proc and you just have nothing previewed on the day. You're pretty much just like sputtering and running out of juice there. And this can kind of like save you in a lot of situations. Uh, next up, we have all the things that block bad omens. And so this one will make it so the blind doesn't block everything around it. It will just block uh, sideways and up and down. I don't really think that this is very useful. Now, when you upgrade this, this does make it so that clicking on a blind node uh, pretty much just allows you to just travel past it. But I don't almost ever upgrade this unless I'm upgrading everything. Uh, because I don't really like blind. I think it's not very good. In a lot of ways, you want to be using things like Mr. Misfortune, Baby Bear, and Filth Wages to remove the bad omens to get you more stuff. And this is kind of like makes you sidestep the bad omen, which is not necessarily something you want to do. Next up, we have blocking anxiety. And I think that this goes like very solidly up into the core list because the one thing that can really end your run, especially like on day 14, day 15, is an anxiety like blocking your way to the exit. And uh, it's gonna cost like an insane amount to remove. I think a day 15 anxiety that hasn't been reduced is like 200 sanity to remove. And so if you haven't already like won by that point, uh, you're definitely probably gonna be losing. And uh, this, once it's upgraded, makes it so anxiety costs zero which combined with any of these other four, uh, actually with that, with Mr. Misfortune or Baby Bear and Filth Wages, makes anxiety like a good tile now, which is really good. Uh, I'm gonna put blocking poverty here in gimmick because I think that this is a kind of secret, not really secret, but a sneaky way to help you generate gold early on. And so things like uh, Banker's IOU is a good way to get extra gold from your banks. Getting Carto Bag is another way to get gold. And then the third way is to get blocking poverty in. And so when you take it normally, it will just make it so poverty doesn't do anything. But when you upgrade it, now instead of losing gold for every single cell you reveal, you're now gonna gain eight gold. That's not a ton, but this has definitely saved a lot of my early game runs where I don't have like almost any of my core items really set up. 
And then between like healing bag and this, we're able to like kind of get ourselves into a better position thanks to all the gold. Now, I don't really like to force poverty where every other tile is poverty, but I'll talk about that in a second. Lastly, we have the blocking anorexia. I don't necessarily think that this is super great. I'd probably put this uh, closer to the front of sometimes helpful. If you're really struggling and uh, you're like for fo focusing a lot on using food to remove bad omens because you don't have things like anxiety blocker yet, this can be good. But for the most part, the only time this actually makes any difference is when you are using food to remove bad omens. Lastly, uh, we have all of the forcing more of a particular bad omen. And when they're not upgraded, I think it increases the chances quite a bit. But then when they are upgraded, you will only reveal those in the future. And so like if you buy, if you upgrade this in the middle of a day, it won't change any of the ones that are already previewed or revealed to that type, but you will only preview or reveal that type in the future. And so I would say the more blind though comes into last resort. In fact, out of all of the uh, normal uh, old stuff here, this is the only one I've never taken ever because I think it is bad. I don't think that th this one should maybe even get its own tier of please don't <laughs> because I don't think that this is very good. Now, maybe if you like don't get any of the bears, you have this upgraded and then you have this offered to you, maybe that's okay. But like we said, we like this just helps you sidestep all of the blind bad omens where really you kind of want to be using them as good nodes and with like turning Mr. Misfortune, Baby Bear, you know, turning those into good nodes. Likewise, I will say that the more anxiety is like kind of the gimmicky thing. So I don't ever want to really take this before I have the anxiety blocker. But as soon as I have this particular uh, old stuff, this is something I'm looking for and I want to get. And then ideally, I know that I will like win the game basically once I upgrade both of these, because now we're only going to get anxiety. It's going to be free to remove and very likely it's going to give me sanity back. It's going to give me coins back and it's just made the game a lot easier. Uh, next up, so we have more poverty. So some people like to go and force this with the upgraded poverty blocker because these do stack. If you have two uh, poverties active with the block poverty upgraded, you'll get 16 coins per click. However, poverty can like at late game become very expensive to remove. And then you need to use other strategies to deal with it, like lots of food and other things. And I just don't like that. I've actually lost runs due to having just too many poverty in the way. I don't have enough food to kind of deal with it. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of not fun. And so I'll put that there. And then lastly, more anorexia. I just put here in the last resort as well, uh, probably a little bit ahead of that. And simply because uh, doing the upgraded anorexia, I don't really think it is all that useful. This gives you a 30% chance, which I don't believe stacks, uh, to not consume the food that you're going to be using. And uh, this can kind of maybe help you a little bit, but the 30% chance is not super duper useful. And uh, that's pretty much it for the normal old stuff. All of the stuff that remains here are all things that you can kind of find randomly. And we'll go through them real quick. So the goggles comes from the like... Uh, you, you find ruins of an old place. Do you want to use sanity to have a chance to find stuff? And if you spend 18 or maybe 16 sanity, you have a chance to get these. And this pretty much makes it so you can click anywhere on the map every, every single day. And so if you have kind of the gimmick going with the Carto bottle and stuff, this would be pretty nice. But for the most part, they're, you know, they're, they're good. I would... I pretty much, if I have the sanity and I don't think it's going to kill me, I will always click through that event as much as possible because it has a chance to give me goggles and give me other stuff as well. The uh, I think it's called Spoiled Sauce basically gives you upgraded block anxiety, but just all of the time you have a 30% chance to not use your food. And I would definitely take this. I put this even like barely into often helpful because it's just you know pretty often helpful. You're going to be using food. This basically just gives you a 30% more multiplier on your food. 
Uh, the next thing is an event where you have a chance of picking between, uh, I think it's 50% chance for daily food, or I think it's like 15% chance for daily old stuff at the start of the day. And I always pick food. And the reason I pick food is because uh, food can be pretty impactful. It's never negative. So I can't get more anorexia or more blind from, uh, you know, get picking up food, whereas you can get that from this box. And it's just more likely to proc. And if you upgrade the food bowl, it goes to 100%. So you're always kind of having something to rely on every single day. And it's not so random. Uh, the next one is doubles your coins, but it makes it so you can't earn any more coins. And uh, this is like last resort for me. I will only ever click this on like day 14, day 15. I'm already winning. It's just kind of for the memes. Like, I think this one's just downright bad. And it kind of goes along with uh, no sanity here. This full heals your sanity, but you can't gain any more sanity. So you have to like win on whatever you have less, which I, uh, I think this is pretty bad as well. And then we have the key, and this comes along with an event where you get three to five random old stuff, but then the key prevents you from picking up any more old stuff. And I would never take this. Almost any, the only time I would ever take this is like, I am going to lose today if I don't take this key. That's the only chance, only reason I would ever take that. It is very, very bad. The next two give you mistosis, which is basically the, uh, quantity multiplier. The first one gives you a 30% chance at the start of the day, 60% when it's upgraded to give you mistosis and goes up to six stacks. Uh, I think this is actually pretty good. If you can get this from an event, it's not a bad thing to get. And then the mistosis explorer, I think this is like the, uh, like the black goat event and it makes it so you get one mistosis and you can upgrade that to three, but it's going to cost you two additional to like look around. And I will only take this in situations where I've started to get my like win together and I don't feel like I, you know, I, I have some gold generation, I have some sanity generation and like maybe even you know, have the beak mask, this will kind of like cancel, cancel that out. And, uh, but this one's a little bit more scary to take definitely than this. Uh, the next one is the brain. You can only get this, I think from an event that gives you a pink walnut, which is a food that gives you this particular old stuff. This uh, old stuff just makes it so your sanity can't go below one for that day. I've had this like win a run for me once before because uh, I'm just get a situation where it's like I'm gonna lose today, like right now. If I don't, if I don't use this, like I will just lose sanity and I'll die. And so I just click it and then just clear out the entire map, do everything, and it's giving me enough to like stabilize. But this is kind of like a more win type of thing. Like it's like very rare that you're actually going to be able to like come back from a lose and use this to actually stabilize into the next day. But you know, if you happen to make that happen, that's really awesome. Torn map is an event that makes it so that you get one random previewed cell. And if it's upgraded, it's always the clock tower, but it, you always lose, I think it's 30 sanity or 15 max sanity. I could be wrong. Uh, and I think this is okay. I'll very frequently take this if I know that that's not going to overly wound me, especially if I'm looking to get my gimmick set up. But if uh, I'm kind of like struggling a little bit on Sandy, I won't take this. Next up, we have two things that I've never seen before in any run with a white and black bonsai. And I believe that both of these will increase the amount of cost for like both exploring or removing bad omens but every single day they will grow and make it so the costs come down and down and down. And I believe after three days, it's not positive old stuff. And uh, I mean, really you kind of have to take whichever one that you think is going to be better. I personally prefer the exploring one, uh, especially when we talk with the egg here, because I like to always get the anxiety blocker and then force anxiety. So anxiety is already free. So I don't really care necessarily about uh, reducing the cost of it. But if you don't have anxiety blocker yet, this could be maybe something good to get. Although the first couple of days are going to be really painful. So without the bears and stuff, it could be kind of bad. Next up, we have the remove and the explore egg. This is kind of similar to the bonsai. It gives you an option between the two. It will make removing bad omens a lot cheaper. However, each day the cost goes up unless you upgrade it. And the same thing with the explorer's egg. 
And uh, like very frequently, I will take the explore egg and then try to upgrade it right away. But I tend to really only want to like take these if I'm already winning. Last up, we have the uh, dolls. And these are completely random. I've only gotten, I think, the diviner, the explorer, and the banker at this point. Actually, I don't know if I've gotten the banker. And these guys just get like a random event. We'll give you a random one of these four. And uh, like I said, I've done Mistville a whole bunch. I haven't even gotten these yet. And so if you get one, that's great. If you don't, you know, it's kind of whatever. Hopefully this video helped you out. Kind of give you a bit more insight into Mistville. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys like the tier list videos, please let me know uh, something we can do. And I'll put up the template for this in the comments as well. We'll see you guys again next time. And thanks for hanging out.